Hey guys! So today you and I are going to talk about engineering managers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, when your software engineering manager say, says let's avoid discussing tactical issues in a one-on-one -on -one meeting, what does that mean? Well, uh, it of course depends a little bit on I mean, if you're talking about a specific individual, it's not so straightforward for me to say why exactly, but I can give you sort of what I suspect is going on. Uh, so for those of you who haven't heard this term, uh, tacticals or being tactical about an issue or so forth is usually something we, we use to refer to either that you have to make a compromise somewhere, which is usually for a lot of software developers turned into, translated into, you're going to have to hack something together in order to do something short term because you have to ship things quickly. But it can also be related to your career. Uh, and that's what I'm suspecting is going on now because of course the, you could be the manager in question can be referring to that you have a lot of bugs and issues related to the code but the idea behind a one-on-one -on -one meeting is that it should be for your benefit usually it's something where you and your manager has some time to go through things look at your personal development etc etc it depends a little bit on the manager but it can also be questions around you know you can refer to tactical issues such as well, your career ladder, your personal progression and so forth. But I suspect that this is more a question of that when you talk with your manager in these one-on-ones, you're usually just discussing things that are going on in the code base. And that's not really necessarily the intention of the one-on-one -on -one meeting per se. Uh, it can absolutely be because it depends on, of course, what your manager has uh, thought about or what that what ideas the manager has for you and for the general career progression that you're going to do within the company. Uh, and this is something that is good to know for you guys is that uh, your career strategy and so forth should ideally not just come from the manager because uh, the thing that this manager is probably trying to figure out is, all right, how am I going to deal with you and how am I going to give you the support that you need to do the things that you want to do? And the basic idea of the one-on-one -on -one is literally that, that it's a coaching session or it's a way for you to have some time talking to, to talk to your manager about what are next steps for you, how can you improve, can you, if you get any feedback, it is usually, this is usually the meeting that you get it in and so forth and so forth. So. The reason why I tell people usually that it's good a good idea for you to have an idea of where you want to take your career is because if you leave that up to the one-on-one -on -one meetings, depending on the manager, you might not actually get anything from the one-on-one -on -one meetings and you might not actually do much in terms of career progression. It's very similar to how I like to tell people who go who are in school and so forth that it doesn't really matter if you have a good or bad teacher, or rather, you're lucky if you have a good teacher, but if you even if you have a bad one, the job of the teacher is not necessarily to give you your dreams or to give you your, your future career or so forth. They're there to provide a service to you, and if you want to be a responsible student, you have to figure out what it is that you want so that you can direct your own path forward. And a one-on-one <clears throat> -on -one meeting is the sort of coaching meeting where such things usually happens. Now, I personally think that, as I said, you shouldn't you shouldn't just let that be on the manager's side, because the manager is a different person from you and cannot possibly know what you desire with your career and what you want, where you want to take things. But what they can do, if they're good at what they do, is to help you make things concrete or provide options for you. To, so if you come into a one-on-one -on -one meeting, I suggest that rather than just discussing tactical issues with the code, take the chance to take this meeting more as a way for you to rubber duck a little bit about your ideas of where you want to take your next step and how you can improve or how you can rise within the ranks of your company or something like that. To give you a concrete example of this in action is when I've talked to like my manager for example, he's been of course uh, thinking about what would 
be a good fit for the next thing that I'm supposed to do. And in his mind, he thinks that, you know, it would be great if I went into more of a management role. But I've also told him that, no, actually, I don't want to let go of the coding uh, because I th have I enjoy coding to the point where it's not something that I ever want to get rid of. But at the same time, of course, I am well aware of that that puts me in a position where growth becomes difficult because once you reach a certain point it's difficult for you to well at least within the same company find more technical challenges that will evolve you because when you get to the higher levels of proficiency within your field it becomes very easy to learn very quickly it becomes very easy to sort of exhaust a place of work in terms of technical development and so that puts my manager in a bit of a difficult position uh, in essence because he has of course realized that well it's going to be difficult to give frederick like a you know a new team or put him in a technical challenge when our like because the idea is of course guys that these are mutual benefits like the manager wants to put you in a position within the company where you can grow but it also has to benefit the company so a good manager won't just say hey here is some udemy courses go and learn a bit of rust or python or something like that they're going to try to fit you into some type of role where you get real hands-on experience. Now, as I said, my manager's idea of that is to basically put me on the manager path and make me into a manager, but I don't want that. So now, as a responsible student or a responsible employee, I have to have an idea of, okay, how can I ask for help here? How can my manager assist me with this? And that's the thing that I usually try to take in the one-on-one -on -one meeting. So for my concrete example, it would be where I've said to my manager that, well, I've identified that my technical skills is at a, a pretty decent level now. And I've also identified that in this company, you don't really have any projects that would challenge me in a technology w uh, way, apart from maybe me switching from engineering work to maybe just doing DevOps or something like that but that's not something that my manager really wants because I'm doing well with the coding and that's that's sort of the situation right because I have to basically switch career paths so if I want to do that more full-time so what I tell my manager is that okay but is there some way for you to give me responsibilities within say hiring or dealing with uh, contracts or actually having you know, not just managing teams and taking care of tech, the tech lead role and the architect's role and so forth, but actually ho own the contracts and hire new people and put up budgets and so forth for the company. And the reason why I want that is because the company in, qu in question is going through that sort of transition where it's trying to hire more people, staff up teams and so forth, so they need a lot of help with that. And that can create a very symbiotic relationship for me and my managers, uh, sort of it can create a path forward because the company needs the help, I will l learn something new and develop from it and my, uh, I will further my understanding of, of software as a field. That's the sort of ideas that you should bring to the table into these one-on-one -on -one meetings where you have had a thought about what's going on in the company, what things could I get involved in so that I grow as a software developer. Because discussing just bugs and tactical issues and so forth, is it's great if you have to talk about those things, but you shouldn't treat the one-on-one -on -one meeting as some type of you know, debriefing with your manager where you all you do is talk about, well, we have these bugs, these things are going on, etc, etc. Because ideally you should use this time, as I said, to be a good student and come with some suggestions of things that you want in order to further your career. So what I want you to take away from this is that I suggest that you treat the one-on-one -on -one meetings less as a way of just reporting what's going on and bugs and things like that, and more as a way to have a coaching session with your manager. It's a little bit like a life coach. If you have a good manager, they will have some ideas of what you can do, how you can improve, things like that. My manager is pretty good, so he, of course, has some ideas of, oh, Frederick should be learning this and this and that. I think that would really develop his career further. But at the same time, you don't want to just leave that to your 
your manager because as I said with the teacher your teacher is not going to be there forever they're here to teach you something and if you don't have any idea of what you want to learn in order to become the thing that you want to become it becomes very difficult for somebody else to help you and you should really not leave that up to chance because you might find out that their idea of what you should be doing in the future might be very different from what you actually want and so what I do with my manager is I say well I like my coding for example my, my manager wants to make me into a manager and I go yeah I can do management work I can because there are some hard skills uh, that I need from uh, experiences f from being an engineering manager that would be very beneficial to my career but I don't want to go all in and I don't want to do it full time so maybe we can discuss how can I do my coding and still do that part and help out with the sort of things that a engineering manager for example does and now we have a dialogue all of a sudden I have some requirements he has some ideas of how to do it and we try to find a way where I can learn these things or get experience with them but it should also benefit the company at the same time and if you do this and you have the right company you can actually develop your career quite a bit and in some companies you realize that actually there is really no more way for me to like the company is not in a good structure for me to do certain things right now as I was saying with say DevOps so you might have to either go to another company if that is what you really really want or you might have to look at other alternatives of skill progression that you can uh, take on within that organization that that company actually needs have a great day